Today we're going to talk about planning, implementing, and evaluating su successful grower buyer connections events. First, I'd like to start with a little background about myself and the programs that are represented here today. So my, na my name is Robin Stout, like I said, and I am the coordinator for the NC 10% campaign, which is a um, collaborative initiative out of the Center for Environmental Farming Systems and Cooperative Extension. And the 10% campaign was started uh, before I came here, but it was a game changer idea that came out of a, a Farm to Fork Summit and Guide um, back in 2009. And then in 2010, it was launched. And when it was launched, uh, local food agents and Cooperative Extension were appointed. And these agents could use the campaign as an outreach tool in their counties. And basically the campaign is a website here and businesses and consumers sign up to pledge to spend 10% of their existing food budget on North Carolina grown, raised, and caught foods. And community partners can sign up to promote local foods and folks let us know what they're buying and they report their numbers and it feeds live to our website. And so this is a little bit dated, but over, um, 7,200 7, uh, individuals and over a thousand businesses have pledged and reported over $60 million spent on locally grown foods in North Carolina. And the four main um, parts of the 10% campaign are a web-based local food search and tracker. And so this is, this is kind of a neat um, dashboard that's individualized for the consumers or the businesses that are reporting local foods and they can compare themselves with others in their communities. And they can also uh, see what's going on in their, in their county. And in addition to that, we also are collecting data on where they're buying local foods. So is it a farmer's market, a retail, um, a restaurant, and so on. So this is a really exciting. And um, we also, folks can find where the businesses that have pledged to spend 10% campaign are located. I mean, excuse me, 10% local are located. There's a marketing and promotion, a uh, really fun collars in the cafeteria video, and some other things. Outreach and education, and this is through community events or through um, educational booths, uh, through a local food ambassador program at universities, and then there is uh, networking, and that's what we're gonna talk to about today. So the networking can either be through grower, growers and buyers, networking them, or through um, other consumers networking about where they can find local foods or students and um, so on. So just another quick visual on some of the programs out of the 10% campaign. And again, we are gonna talk about today about the Grower Buyer Connections. And you all have a guide, planning guide in front of you. The other folks that are here today, uh, Joanna Likis, and she is the program coordinator for the Extension Local Foods flagship program. So um, this is a great resource for all things local foods in North Carolina. A lot of it links to other resources across the state, um, but it is a great uh, resource. And so the 10% campaign also works with Cooperative Extension at both NC State and ANT. And this is also a great link uh, for small farms resources for small farms. And I am um, supposed to mention today as well, there's a great resource out in the hallway that's being developed through many, many project partners and they're listed on there. But this is a great infographic about um, economic and farm agri agriculture data in, your, in different counties. And only about, few, only about three or four counties have been printed out. But um, I was asked to mention that. So the other big player is um, in these grower buyer events and the, the planning guide that we are we put together is NC Growing Together and Rebecca Dunning who was talking in here, uh, speaking in here earlier is the project manager for that. And um, this is not mine so I'm gonna read some notes here about that just to give you some context as to why uh, we've been working on these grower buyer connections. And so, um, this is a five-year project, so NC Growing Together, or NCGT, is a five-year project funded by the USDA Agriculture and Research Food Research Initiative to bring more locally produced foods into the mainstream markets. 
and there's research, academics, and extension as part of that program. So research may be looking at optimal distribution strategies for cross-docking or shopping behaviors in retail grocery stores. Then um, academic opportunities for MBA students and other students to, do, to work in local food businesses. Or uh, working with some of you here or some other extension agents um, in the counties to put together gap training and post-harvest handling. And this has a lot of excellent resources for um, all sections of the food supply chain. Joanne is going to talk about why connect growers and buyers. Thank you. So uh, as Robin mentioned, this has been a project uh, of the NC 10% campaign and the North Carolina Growing Together project. And we're seeing these connection, opportunities to connect growers and buyers as opportunities to connect these growers who are seeking new markets uh, with buyers uh, who are looking for local foods. Um, and the NC 10% campaign is encouraging businesses uh, to spend 10% of their food dollars on local foods, whereas the NC Growing Together project is really trying to understand those local food supply chains and build resources and opportunities around that. And extension across the state, and I'm sure other service providers who work with farmers are, are hearing from buyers, okay, so we want local food in our store or our restaurant or uh, whatever opportunity that is. Who do we buy from? And so as service providers, you don't usually want to direct one person to a buyer. You want to create opportunities where you can share buyers, multiple buyers with uh, multiple growers. And so what we're sharing today is one way to do that. And there's certainly other ways to do that. And there's been other organizations around the state doing this. We've put together, as you saw, um, Robin and the 10% campaign has put together this guidebook of how to do this. So it's really a way, we're talking about facilitating relationships through events um, as a way to provide respectful and mutually beneficial opportunities for buyers and growers to meet one another. Really focusing on creating opportunities to build relationships. So we wanted to just ask qu quickly, how many of you were in the last session in this room? Yes. So you all heard Rebecca and Dustin talk a lot about the importance of those relationships. So you bring up a good point that as an extension agent, this is an opportunity when other folks are having these events, if you can attend, you can meet buyers too and build those relationships to help um, make those connections in your own community. So and as Rebecca was alluding to um, earlier, it's not just these these formal events that the main intention is to make these connections, these connections can happen in other events, post-harvest handling training or GAP certification where you may have buyers there as well that can meet the, the growers. So I'll hand it back to Robin now. So, um, so these events, Grower Buyer Connections events, have kind of morphed from many different iterations into this what we think kind of works the best based on some of the things that you all have done, some of the things that other agents have done and we've worked with, and based on um, other events that we've participated with. And so um, Grower Buyer Connections events are designed to connect individual growers to individual buyers in a respectful and efficient setting that can lead to a sales relationship. So I might bounce around a little bit about why that's important, but um, if we can have these little short one-on-one -on -one conversations to really just let each other know that there are people. You're a people, I'm a person, we can talk. And it, but we want to keep it pretty quick because sometimes that relationship isn't, maybe isn't going to work um, based on what this farmer grows and based on what this buyer needs. So we kind of wanted to keep it kind of quickly, make it happen quickly. And so, <coughs> excuse me, we didn't want to call it speed dating because we thought fa farmers might kind of find that awkward. And so we call it speed meeting. <laughs> And this has been a really, really um, successful so far. And so uh, it's very, it's a facilitated conversation. And so uh, if you want to kind of flip through here, you see some slides that were put together. Um, and, you, and you really keep, um, keep folks on. Um, you keep those slides moving every one minute or two minute. And so these groups of, um, these, these pairs are at a table. They can talk for eight to 10 minutes, and then you move them along. And this can be difficult um, to move them along, but it's, it's really, um, it's a way that you, you can get to talk to everyone while you're there. Um, and then, so growers can bring their product lists, they can bring photos of their farms, that's really important. We also put together a little, um, 
example, half page brochure. And this, is, this seems really obvious to, to maybe us, but um, having an example for a farmer to look at is really useful um, if you flip through there. Um, and then buyers can share their requirements and volume, their insurance, their delivery terms. They may have certain expectations for delivery that uh, growers aren't used to. So really just getting that out on the table, um, literally, if they have it in a um, one pager. Um, so, that, so that the buyer can, the grower can immediately know what you know, that buyer is expecting. Um, this planning guide is online and it has a timeline and event supplies and some suggested language that we've used in the past and um, some one pagers or conversation notes. So you're just flipping through there. And this is sort of in development, so if you, so you all have done this or are, are maybe putting these on, please let us know feedback on this as well. And you know, it's important to, um, to be able to edit. So these are downloadable forms. And what's really important here are these prep guides. And so it's a, you know, if they can bring, a, if they already have, a, if a grower already has a brochure, then that's great. But if a grower doesn't have a brochure, then having um, the prep guide that you can turn to and just so, so that in that eight minutes, that short time to build that relationship, to just kind of get to get to, get to know each other and make eye contact, pass cards, uh, business cards, they can, they can have at the ready the types of information that, that buyers are going to ask. And that's really important. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had a question. You sure. Said it's a facilitated uh, conversation. Is, that, is there a facilitator? Yes. Uh, that's a great question. So there's not a facilitator at every table. So what would have been cool is if we could have um, moved these tables around to show you, but just like maybe eight tables and a big circle, and you have a slide set up here. And so the facilitator is just standing at the top and literally just getting people to move. And so the conversation ha happens som somewhat naturally, but they have a guide. So um, again, it if there's an awkward, you know, kind of a, it's kind of awkward to meet eight to ten new buyers in one day. And so if, if they know exactly kind of the script that they're going to go on is really great. So, the, so it really only needs one facilitator to um, get folks moving around. Um, we have in the past um, had someone that was a part of our group go, kind of go around the room as well as a buyer and ask questions about how it's going or um, also connect the, f the growers to other resources that might be part of Cooperative Extension or part of CEFs. That's a great question. Yeah. So in many different iterations, I would say between Cooperative Extension, um, NC growing together and NC 10%, probably about 10, I don't know. Um, but as like, <coughs> excuse me, as like this, I've done, I've done probably about three, three or four. But I didn't, I didn't develop this idea. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> this is just a lot of folks have done this in different ways. And so that's why it would be great to, to, to get feedback to find out what has worked for you all and what hasn't. And maybe it depends on um, the type of buyers that you have. And we are going to go into that a little bit as well. That's a good question, though. Other questions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We call it, call it retail ready. <laughs> yeah. So some of, the, some of the beginning ones that this is based on were retail ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So Market Ready in South Carolina, is that what you're saying? Okay, great, great resource. Yes? Yes, so <clears throat> that takes us to our next slide, to the types of events. Thank you for setting that up for me. <laughs> so um, this is really important. Um, the type of buyer that is interested, that is a, is a hospitality or, or restaurant or somewhat retail, may not be looking for the same products or the same scale farmer that a grocery store, a larger grocery store or wholesale is looking for. So our advice is do not try to do this in one big happy day. Um, really try to match. And again, we're not trying to call it speed dating, but there is an element of that. So matching the right farmer with the right buyer. So what we have done is, um, for, so we've done some grower restaurant buyers, uh, excuse me, events. And um, restaurants tend to be, and this is a little bit what uh, Dustin touched on, restaurants tend to be more interested in um, proteins. That, of course, they want vegetables, but they're more interested in proteins a lot of the time than the wholesalers. Seafood, specialty items like mushrooms, and rare, interesting varieties, something that they can really s say that they exclusively have. So a lot of larger scale buyers may not have some of these things, and the larger may not sell some of these things and may not be interested. So you have your kind of smaller, maybe d more diverse farmers paired with your restaurant, retail, or hospitality. Um, the grower, the grower wholesale, wholesaler events. This is really important to have um, your large scale, larger scale buyers, so your mid to larger scale buyers that probably have gap certification already. Um, the ones that we've had with wholesalers, we, we only invited gap certified farmers because it just wasn't, um, it wasn't really worth their time to come, the farmer's time to come, if they didn't already have that gap certification because the, the buyer would just say, you know, it's great to meet you, how's your family, and then wouldn't even let the conversation go beyond that. So that's a great question. Did you have, have you worked with um, those buyers? No? Okay. <laughs> Any questions about this? Anybody tried to do this? with different, different size of buyer? Okay. So what's best for your, for your area? Do you have farmers that are ready? Um, can the buyers buy directly from a farmer? This is really important. <laughs> and this is some of the um, information we would love to have feedback from you all on. Um, you know, what are questions you can go ahead and ask that buyer? What are five questions you can ask that buyer if you, when you're wanting to understand if this is a good fit for them, if this buyer connection, grower buyer connection event is a good fit for them? Um, we work a lot with universities. They have a really tough time buying outside of their contract. So at this point, having them come to the table with a, um, with a, you know, to try to buy directly from a farmer is really hard because they actually can't buy a lot of times out of their contract. So they can't buy directly from a farmer. Um, we're working on that, though. Um, do you have local organizations that we'd like to collaborate for your restaurant or retail buyers, uh, grower buyer events? Downtown development's really great. Um, consider online. I, you all know this, but this is just, you know, we felt like we need to put this in there. Do farmers check their email? <laughs> it's better to call them or um, mail a flyer, which is why we, we put an example in there. Um, do you have a budget for mailers, locally grown snacks? It's important if you're going to have snacks to have local sna locally grown snacks so that those buyers can see top-notch local food. <clears throat> so when is the best time to have a grower buyer event? Again, you all know this, but we'll just go ahead and, and reiterate. Farmers are able to come in the winter months. We had one planned for last February. Of course, it snowed, so we had to change it to March. So there are those considerations, but they're more likely to come in those winter months. Um, and this is just, you know, just to give you some idea of how long it'll take to put it together, um, really get on people's uh, radars a little bit earlier, and um, um, really make sure you can get other folks involved in your community that might have connections with buyers. Evenings are good um, for farmers, but evenings and week weekends don't work for restaurants. So um, 
Monday's afternoon might be a good time if you're going to do a farm or a restaurant event because <laughs> uh, restaurant owners usually have off on Monday. Questions so far? It's a lively group here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good. That was more statewide. So that's a, great, that's a great question. So for your restaurant retail, you really probably, they want, they want the, their customer to come in there and see that farmer's face and know that farmer and recognize that farmer that they already know and say, oh, okay, this is a legitimate place because they have the farm, they're buying from the farmer that I know. That's really important to get those farmers from down the street. But for the wholesaler GAP certified farmer, um, statewide is, is, is fine. Um, regional is fine. Um, it's, less important. It, it's less important for the cu customer to come in there and already know that farmer than it is for the re restaurant and retail matches. So we did have to go more statewide or regional for the, for the GAP certified farm slash wholesaler event. Any other questions? I'm going to turn it over to Joanna at this point. Yeah. Um, we, there have been uh, similar events in Virginia. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Um, the feedback that I've heard about it, of course, you always hear the negative rather mm -hmm. than positive, is um, follow through. So I'm uh, yeah. if you all have strategies to encourage follow through both on the grower side and buyer side. Yeah, okay, I'll let Joanna talk about that. It's a great question. You guys are doing great as far as getting us to the next subject, so I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about successes and lessons learned from the programs that we've delivered so far. Um, really, um, Robin's talked about this. You wanna find, you wanna have folks at the event that are, uh, that are good matches that you feel like are probably a good match. They have certain criteria in place already that are gonna make them a good match. For example, the GAP certified farms with the wholesale buyers, distributors, or uh, retail grocery stores, that kind of thing. So, and what we found is that buyers that have attended two or more events were often able to establish a sales relationship. And that's not necessarily two or more of these, uh, these particular types of events, but events where growers and buyers were in the room together. So as Rebecca mentioned in the last, uh, in the last program, um, GAP certified, uh, GAPS trainings or post-harvest handling trainings where you invite buyers there to, to grade produce with the farmers in the training, that's another opportunity for them to connect. So <clears throat> um, the other thing is with the NC Growing Together, 10% uh, campaign partnered events, about nine out of 10 of the producers that have attended those have made a sales relationship with the buyers there. And again, it's not just from one event, and I'll talk about that in a moment, about thinking about programming. So our lessons learned, repeated interactions are really important, building those relationships uh, and it's better to have fewer well-matched growers and buyers. You know, you don't necessarily want a room full of growers and buyers. You want to make sure that there are certain criteria uh, of the grower, that the growers meet that are what the buyers are looking for. Um, so if a buyer, and the reason for that is we want to make efficient use of both the buyer and grower's time. And uh, if the buyers go to too many events where they don't create a relationship, they're not going to come back. So you want to create a situation that's most effective, and that's what we're finding works well, finding those, those criteria that meet those matches early on, and um, having both sides be ready. <laughs> and this was just trying to find out, find the, the best way to move people around the room. We, we tried to whistle, we tried different things, and cowbell seems to work really well. So program development may be more of the language of extension than others in the room, but if you're developing a program for the year and one of your uh, intended outcomes is to build these sales relationships between growers and buyers, you may include different types of trainings, including one of these events. So if the facilitating relationship uh, building is that, that primary objective, 
It's key in local food systems development. Don't think of it as a one and done event. So keep this goal in mind throughout the different program uh, trainings that you develop throughout the year. Um, think about working across multiple counties. And as Dustin raised the question about the GAP certified farmers, you may have to do that in order to find enough growers uh, to have at an event and, and beyond just your local county area. And then um, that well-matched and well-suited. So if you have, you want to think about who are the buyers in your area that are looking for local foods. If it's mostly restaurants at this point in time, you want to identify growers that uh, can, can best suit the needs of a chef. So we're going to have you all take a little bit of time to talk with one another about what you've learned here or heard here, um, looking through the guide that you have. And we're looking for some feedback from you too, but take that time to talk about who are the local food buyers in your particular area. Who are the local growers who are interested in those local markets? And talk through, are they smaller farmers that need to sell to restaurants? Are they more mid-sized farmers that are getting GAP certified or are GAP certified? Uh, do you have larger markets that are interested in, um, in uh, oops, uh, this, uh, interested in various uh, grower opportunities? Are the growers uh, GAP certified? This should be larger growers interested in various markets, sorry. So if you want to maybe gather in fours, threes or fours around the room and talk through that and brainstorm You've got to develop a relationship with these buyers, too, to get them in the room. So think about how you're going to develop that relationship with the buyer so you can bring them in the room for these types of events. And then we'll get back together in about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. Great. Thank you all for your input uh, and feedback from the breakout groups. So we wanted to go a little bit into how you evaluate the events. How do you know if they're being successful? So first, let's talk about some of the potential sh short-term outcomes. These can include um, knowledge exchange or information exchange between the growers and buyers, and a developing increased understanding of the needs of both the growers and buyers, so on both sides of the table, uh, as to the business and communication needs that can facilitate successful long-term relationships. Other potential short-term outcomes, identification of solutions to potential impediments to a sales relationship. We've had buyers and growers talk about things like insurance and travel distance and volume. And so both sides of the table may be able to be a little bit more flexible or at least learn about the impediments that each side faces. And then there's always opportunity for event organizers to learn more and take some action to improve future grower buyer events. And then in terms of intermediate outcomes, new sales relationships. So over time, if the growers and buyers reconnect, they may have these successful sales relationships. And in terms of anticipated impacts or changes in conditions, the opportunities are to improve market opportunities for your growers and potentially increase grower profitability. So to evaluate these events, we have provided some sample surveys uh, for assessing immediate outcomes, and you can distribute those at the end of the event. We have a grower survey example and a buyer survey. The grower survey includes some pre and post knowledge and aspiration questions, and the buyer is just very brief about their experience of the event. And then we have some suggested follow-up questions for at six months. You can do it at three months to identify intermediate outcomes. You can do this as a phone or an in-person interview. Um, where you can also glean some more opportunities for information to improve the program, or you could do it as an online survey. This is an example of some of the knowledge change questions, perhaps at a grower and uh, wholesale buyer event. Uh, did you gain um, knowledge in the area of packaging and grading? What was your knowledge before the event and then after the event about food safety certification. The same before and after the event, how to make contact with the buyers in the meetings today. And then at the bottom, aspiration differences. Do you, 
did you meet one or more of the buyers that you intend to explore sales opportunity with? And this is the sample buyer satisfaction survey. It's very brief, doesn't get into knowledge and aspirations, really finding out if the buyer intends to talk with one or more of the growers that they met. If not, why not? And then leaving some uh, open space for them to share more about how the event went for them. So this will close our workshop today. Uh, we really look forward to more input from you on the guidance document as you utilize it. Uh, please send any feedback. Robin Stout will be the main point of contact for that as the NC 10% campaign statewide coordinator. My contact information is here as well if you wanted to reach out to me. Thank you all so much for being here.